Uh, Jack, firstly, can I start? Um, you see a lot of clubs boycotting social media with regards to the issues over online hate and racism. Is that something that you would back or the club would consider? Um, it's not something I've discussed with the players as of yet, and I think it would be very much a decision for them to take in the club. Um, it's difficult for me to offer a personal opinion on it because I don't really use those platforms. Um, however, I've been a long term advocate of the lack of regulation um, and accountability through those types of platforms. I think that that opinion I've held for a number of years now, it's only in recent times I think there's more um, scrutiny being placed upon the type of language and the type of use that is openly used via those platforms. So um, if there's a positive to take out of it is the fact that that has been ever increasingly highlighted and it may force um, action to take place that, that increases that accountability. We were speaking to Ron Gordon during the week. What did you make of what he had to say in terms of the overall health of the club? Well, I think that it was nothing that um, I wasn't aware of. So the fact that I speak to Ron regularly um, and I'm involved in, in all the board meetings means that there was no surprises for me in terms of his overall plans for the club and then where the club stood financially in terms of the health of it and how, and how obviously they've still been impacted by um, the last um, 30 months now, if you like, in terms of this, this um, the pandemic that we've all lived through. So um, for me, as I said, there was no, no surprises. There was nothing that um, I didn't know, if you like. Um, and it just runs very much in alignment with, I think, what we've tried to do in recent times, what we're going to continue to do, try and move forward in terms of keep building a consistent success around the club. He said that no players will be sold on the cheap, but he conceded that one or two of the assets might go in the summer. Is that something that he's discussed with you in terms of you've gone through the, the pluses and minuses of that sort of situation? Or have you discussed what would happen thereafter? I think we, um, we have plans in place for all scenarios. So in an ideal scenario is your, your squad remains intact and and you look at where you need to think you need to add and strengthen to it. Um, if you lose one player, two players, three players, whatever it may be. So, um, and also, I think Ron knows uh, very much acutely aware of my standing on things that I will adapt to whatever situation I'm in. So even in January, there was no pressure on me um, put on on him from me not to sell any of the players because I understood the challenges the clubs face financially in recent times and the need to always have a plan. Um, and, and believe that at some point you may have to sell really good players for a certain value. So my job is to, to solve the problem, if you like, at all times. Thankfully, I didn't have that big problem in January because of the decision we made as a club. But it may be that the summer is the right time that the club believes to maximise the value in certain players. And if that's the case, then we just adapt and, and move on accordingly. As I said, the, the very first scenario I've painted there about with the new meaning intact is the ideal one, uh, but it's very rarely it pans out like that. Is that the exciting part of this season, though? With five games to go, you're in a good position. You could get a really good European spot as well. And that then puts the club in a stronger position going forward. Yeah, I, mean, I think that it was, it was it highlighted again within the AGM, the benefits of us qualifying for Europe, um, the length of time we can stay in European competition and the stage of it we can progress to, the benefits to the club financially. And then if I look from a purely football point of view, how it helps us attract good players to the club in terms of us participating in Europe, um, hopefully, and then also the pathway that we can provide the players to go and be successful and, and, and show how good they are, such as Kevin Ryan playing regularly this season, Josh Doy coming through the academy to play all these success stories that we've had, um, that coinciding with a successful team performance over a season um, should strengthen our ability to hopefully attract good players as well. Jack, you talk about... Um perhaps solving a problem next season or, or, you know, you nearly had to in January if your top players do get sold. Is, is there any you know, excitement from your point of view that perhaps if your top players do get sold, you might get quite a lot back to reinvest in the team? Do you, do you kind of look forward to that as a manager ever? Um, I think it's just, it's just very much part of the job. Um, you know, the, the, the circumstances in which you, you work in um, evolve fairly quickly. Um, and you just have to adapt and you know again people speak about philosophies and approaches in management the truth is unless you're very very fortunate and you're at a club that is incredibly wealthy and has the same starting point all the time you've got to be able to adjust 
accordingly. And um, the part of, as I said, mentioned the problem solving aspect of it. That's a bit of joy. You know, it's trying to find the solutions to each problem you have. And sometimes on a daily basis, sometimes a weekly, sometimes they come in transfer windows. Um, as I mentioned, and if it means that the, the summer presents, I'm, I'm using the word problems, I don't mean the problems, if it, if it presents challenges or puzzles that we have to try and figure out, then so be it. It's an enjoyable part of the job. We just spoke to um, to Josh there, and he said you know, the, the, you know Tierney and Robertson are kind of players that he looks at, aspires to. Perhaps one day he he could reach the level they're playing at. I know you've spoken about him plenty already this season, but do you think he can kind of reach that level that those two are at, considering he's broken through at such a young age? Well, I think he's got um, attributes that give him a very very good chance of that. So I think it's one thing to. Um, to start playing regular first team football at a very good level at 18. But the second of all, I think you have to dig a bit deeper and look at what he has um, in his locker, what he's shown already and what we still feel he can improve upon. So he's got, in my opinion, all the necessary attributes to reach that level of the game. And you know, I think that people start discussing young players of the year, etc. in this country. I can't see many that um, will be better than over the course of the season, how how consistently he's played in our first team. He's been part of a team that's consistently challenged at the top end of the table. Um, and his performance level within that in the, within that time has been hugely consistent as well. So for an 18-year-old teenage fullback, not be far and away the best in the league this season in terms of overall that young player will be up there with any across the league as well. Jack, can I ask you about going to Ibrox on Sunday? No domestic club has won at Ibrox in over 15 months now. Um, what does that tell us about the task? that lies ahead of you and your players on Sunday? Yes, yeah, it's, it, it's the biggest one you get currently in Scottish football. Um, you know, that record is it's not easy to put together. Um, it's testament to what Rangers have done as a team this season and beyond that in terms of that level of consistency. I suppose for us, we can gauge it a little bit on the only time we've been there this season. So on Boxing Day, we travelled there and then um, as if we performed really well and and pushed Rangers really hard that day. So all the games against them this season, we feel as if we've been hugely competitive. In that game at Ibox, we felt as if we performed well. If we performed at the same level, then I think we've got a chance of winning the game. Because we did it on that day, we lost it. And that's why they've got that terrific home record, because they've found ways to win games at times as well. But certainly for us, we take um, acknowledging, well, acknowledging the size of the task, take a lot of encouragement from our performance the last time we were there. It's been a strange season playing in, in, in front of big in big stadiums without any crowds. When crowds come back, and we hopefully by the start of next season they'll be back in, do you expect, I mean, Josh, for example, was telling us there, the last big crowd he played in front of was a 1,000 people at Hamden for Queen's Park. He's never played at Easter Road with 18,000 fans there. Do you think having fans back in will make an impact again? Yeah, I think that I think undoubtedly it will be it will be an adjustment again for everybody because I think we've spoken through the course of the season about sometimes the discipline you can keep within your team shape because communication is so much easier within quiet stadiums than it is in stadiums that have noise and atmosphere within them. You then look at the decision making from players in full stadiums as opposed to empty stadiums, um, and then as you mentioned about the, the, the getting used to the pressure of playing in front of a crowd as well. I think for Josh, it's probably been a rather bizarre set of circumstances to play your first full season in, but arguably quite a good way to have an introduction to first team football because the standard of player he's come up against and the standard of teams he's come up against hasn't changed. It's just the fact he's been allowed to do it in an environment that has been has been different and perhaps allowed him that slightly easier, slightly easier introduction to first team football. With the exception of going to Ibrox, where as I say they've been, you know, undefeated, um, there have been a lot of games where you would expect the home clubs to win, but they've not. Do you think that grounds, and big grounds in particular, are less intimidating without fans for opposing clubs? Um, yeah, I think it's I think it's very difficult for us to ignore um, the influence of huge home crowds. I think that's why for a long, long time people have pointed towards that and pointed towards the, the benefit of um, the atmosphere that's generated in some stadiums, some famously, etc. That we'll talk about the advantage that gives them. So, I think this what this season why there's been um, maybe more away victories or more 
better away of performances. I don't know if statistically that's the case. It feels that way. Certainly for us, we've got an away record. I think that's only better by Rangers in the league. So, um, you know, we've seemed to have enjoyed going away. And whether that's been a factor or not, it's very difficult to say for certainty. But but it does change the dynamics of it without a shadow of a doubt, Brian. It's very different going to, to Ibrox on Sunday with no fans in the stadium than it is when, you, you know, when you've got, you know, maybe a couple of thousand your own fans, but, you know, high 40s to 50,000 Rangers fans, the dynamics obviously do change. Thanks, Jack. Good luck, Sunday. Thanks, man. Thank you. Hi, Jack. Um, speaking of fans, obviously having an effect on home games and stuff, I know in the past you've spoke about frustrations with Easter Road pitch and having to ch- sort of change the way you play. Ron Gordon speaking about upgrading the pitch and having a consistency with that at HDC. How vital could that be to towards getting sort of some consistency at Easter Road? Yeah, I mean, I think that um, it's just trying to better the club all the time and, and and push our standards as a club, but also push the standards as a team. And I think every single manager in the league, would, league sorry, would want the best playing surface available to them. I've said frequently that there's no criticism at calling our grounds around because um, there's been no resources spent on the, on the pitch in the past year. So that has made it difficult to keep the pitch to a good standard. This time period, I think, the last home we've had was Motherwell, so we don't play at home again until Livingston, and that hopefully has helped it a little bit. But the truth is, it's not going to improve significantly until the worst done over the summer. And that, when in alignment with improvement, a couple of the pitches at training ground should mean that you know, overall, as a club, we feel as if we're in a stronger position again, standard-wise, and, and hopefully see the benefit of that on pitch in a match day as well. Uh, and something you spoke about today, Jim, yourself, with sort of areas you're looking to strengthen. You mentioned about potentially more goals from midfield, but you were hopeful that McGuinness could potentially add that. Um, are you hopeful, hopeful that his issues that kind of like, obviously he's been out the team a bit, are behind him? Uh, and is it maybe next season before we'll sort of see the best of him? Yeah, I mean, there's different parts to that. I think, first of all, we really can bring him into the club. But we also accepted at that point that this season was not necessarily going to be the one that would... Um, he should be judged on because he was coming back from a serious knee injury. He tend to pick up one or two niggles in the aftermath of that. He's also been unfortunate enough to have COVID through the course of the last um, wee while as well, which rolled him out for a period. Um, so it's been stop start for him. But first of all, he's a really, really good player who I think a huge amount of. That's why I was so desperate to bring him here. And he's been the last probably two, two and a half weeks in training. He's been very, very good, really good. Um, I thought he was good when he came on against Queen of the South. And I think he can look forward to hopefully contributing in this last part of the season. That will give him the platform then to really make that significant impact, I think, um, from, from early next season. Right. Cheers, Jack. Thank you. Is your squad looking for Sunday, Jack? Um, yeah, we just, we as we were from the Community South game, Jamie Murphy missed that game. He had the occurrence of a hamstring injury that um, will rule him out for foreseeable future. Stephen Bradley was on the bench on Monday, but wasn't fit. Um, so we wouldn't have been able to come on either a thigh injury. So um, we, yeah, we do pretty do tight numbers, but we've got enough players fit and available that we need. But um, pretty much the whole squad, Baron, Jamie, Stephen, Sean Mackey, still long term. Um, and as I said, we are the rest of us is, is all that's left in the building. Just before the end of the season, do you think you'll be able to see Jamie again? Yeah, yeah, hopefully. Um, we've not said any time frame at this time. He's, he's been. Um, you know, very close a couple of times and it's been in the last one or two days leading up to him coming back to being involved in the match say that he suffered a recurrence. So frustrating for him, it's been quite hard going for him because he's um, he feels it because he's determined to make an impact here. He has done already at stages this season, but it's been um, it's been a frustrating period for him. So we need to try and get to the bottom of it this time and ensure that when he does come back, then uh, he's good to go. Just quickly, um, I think another thing Ron said during his um, presser and stuff midweek was that you're a, sh- a steady steward of the club. Um, do you agree with that? Um, <laughs> is that, um, I don't know, is that, is that a good or a bad thing? If it's a good thing, I'll agree with it. If it's a bad thing, I'll say no, I don't agree with it. I was going to um, say, mate, you're on mind up. <laughs> uh, yeah, I mean, yeah, I mean, I enjoy the job. Of, I think I've grown into the club. Um, over the past year in particular this season. Um, missed that probably opportunity to form that new relationship with supporters, if you like, from being in the stadium all the time. But I think in terms of being driven to make the club successful and, and being pragmatic enough about the best way to do that, then I think I, you know, my own way of working runs very much in alignment with Ron. So it's been a good partnership so far and a long way that continue.
Jack, Scott Allen mentioned um, recently about his relief at returning back to playing some football. It's good to see him getting some minutes for Inverness. As a, as a manager looking at his road to recovery, is it encouraging to see him getting those minutes there and you looking forward to welcoming him back into the side for next season? Yeah, I mean, the whole reason for him wanting to go on loan was that. You know, I think that's something that, that needs to be recognised. There was absolutely no desire for me for him to leave the club. Um, it was all driven by him. Um, and it was because, you know, the stage, his fitness he was at, because I think you've seen the games, he's played 60, 70 minutes in the Championship. You know, playing the top six of the Premiership is different, a different challenge and intensity of the game. So in order for him to continue that, full recovery from the health issues I had early in the season. We felt as if it was the right thing for him to do and, and ultimately we supported for that uh, had to be convinced. So um, the whole reason for him going there was to get those necessary minutes and it's pleasing that he's, um, he's been doing so. And obviously just a quick one on the Scottish Cup draw you drawn against Stranraer. Are you feeling as if you could maybe get a wee run going and maybe take Hibs back to the final of the Scottish Cup again this season? No, I mean, it'd be, yeah, usually this would be a focus Stevie and the squad is enough for us to look beyond that. We... Um, we were incredibly respectful of Queen of the South and our preparations for that game and how we how we approached it. And I think that was reflected in the performance. And once once Sunday's game out, is out of the way, we um everything we do in the week leading up to Sonar is about um giving them the same depth of preparation that we do for any league game. And if we're successful and we'll be on that, yeah, then it progresses as following the cup again. But certainly for us it's more we're not looking any further than that game.